We're going to take a look now at the key of E. In our guide to reading music, we're at lesson 8, and we've gone through the first four main keys, C, G, D, and A, and now we're into the fifth of the common keys to play in on the guitar, the key of E. Now, the E scale follows the same pattern as every other major scale. Every major scale follows the pattern of whole steps and half steps that we get by going from C to C, no sharps and flats. That puts half steps, of course, between 3 and 4, which is where E and F fall in C, and 7 and 8, which is where B and C fall in C. So our E scale, we're going to start on the low open E string, and as far as reading the notes go, this is the lowest note you're going to see in, in, when you're playing in standard tuning. If you tune down to D, or anything lower, you're going to see notes below that. But that E in the staff is of course written three ledger lines below on the space. So the spaces below the staff are E, G, and B, and then we're into notes below the staff, D. So our low E is right there. And if we just follow our pattern of whole steps and half steps, we need a whole step to note 2, which would be F sharp. We're going to play the E scale in first position for now. And we're going to, meaning first finger, of course, at the first fret. So E, whole step to note 2, F sharp. Whole step to note 3, G sharp. You take a look, you can be following along with the music here. A half step to A will take us to the next string open, of course. Whole step to note 5, B, second fret. Whole step to 6, C sharp. So, so far, all the notes that have been fretted have been at the 2nd and 4th frets. Now we need another whole step to D sharp, which will take us to the 1st fret of the D string, and then E. So there's our first octave of the E scale. And that's what I have, that's the first two measures that we see there on the page. Of course, the next octave would continue from E on the D string, to F sharp, to G sharp, 1st fret of the G string, to A, there's our half step between 3 and 4, B, open, C sharp, D sharp, for another set of notes on the 4th, 2nd, and 4th frets, and then the E string. So now we could of course continue up the E string as well, just following the pattern, and that would be our notes, E, F sharp, G sharp. Now if we're going to play this in if we're going to come all the way up the E string and shift positions a couple of times, we want to shift as um, as few times, that's the word I was looking for, as few times as possible. So we might now do something like this. We might go into second position on the E string and play E, F sharp with your first finger, G sharp with your third finger, and then the A with your little finger. And now, with one shift up the neck, we could play B at the 7th fret, we could play C sharp with our 2nd finger, and D sharp with our 3rd finger, and E with our 4th finger, in what I might call an extended position, where your 4 fingers are covering more than 4 frets. But those can all be reached without moving your hand. Now, there would be more efficient ways of playing that scale up the neck, and what I'm going to talk about in the next segment, but I want you to try to work on this first, is figure out a way to play this E scale, the second octave of the E scale, starting on the E, on the D string, the middle E, but not on that string. This same note could be played on the fifth string at the seventh fret, five frets away on a lower string. So all of these notes that we're playing in kind of in their primary position here can be played in secondary positions further up the neck, meaning not on the string that they are at the lowest fret they could be at. Okay, bad choice of, of uh, syntax or grammar or something there, maybe even bad spelling. But, um, so, this E, that is our second E, this would be our lowest E, this would be the first octave E, could be, of course, on the seventh fret of the fifth string. This would be a really good thing to work on now, is a way to finger the E scale starting on the seventh fret and we're going to end, we want to go two octaves and end up at the E on the 12th fret of the first string. Got that? Okay, so in the next segment we will talk about some of the solutions to that, but see what you can come up with first.